So this is a very basic summary on the topic of viruses. It is geared loosely towards the Irish Leaving Cert Biology course. But remember, you must use your textbook and you must do past papers. So what are viruses? Well, first of all, they're these non-cellular structures, very tiny and so small, in fact, that you would need an electron microscope to view them properly. They're often referred to as infectious agents and some viruses can survive for up to a few days on hard surfaces. There is a great number of viruses and they're highly specific. They only infect a particular small range of host species. But it is very important to know that all viruses do share some common structural features. So they all have these features. So the first similar structural feature that all viruses have is a protein coat, sometimes called the capsid. This protein coat is made up of different numbers of protein molecules. It just depends on the particular virus and it's the arrangement of these protein molecules that gives the virus its unique shape. The second common structural feature is that all viruses have a nucleic acid. It's either DNA or RNA. And if the virus has RNA, it's known as a retrovirus. And the most famous retrovirus is HIV. So all viruses have a protein code called a capsid and a nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA. This is not in your course. It's just really interesting to know that there are some viruses that, in addition to having the capsid, also have this envelope, this viral envelope surrounding them. It's as if they have this membrane that's surrounding the capsid or the protein coat. And this membrane has come from or is derived from the host cell that this particular virus would infect. And basically what happens is that as it leaves the host cell, it gets enveloped in this membrane. And the membrane gets peppered with these particular types of proteins, uh, glycoproteins, and all of this is to facilitate this virus gaining entry into the host. It's really remarkable. So back to the exam material. You need to know the three shapes that are associated with viruses, the first of which is round, then there's rod and finally complex and that's usually associated with a bacteriophage which we'll discuss shortly. A virus that infects a bacterium is known as a bacteriophage and they usually have this complex shape. To counter this invasion, bacteria can produce particular type of enzymes known as restriction enzymes and E. coli 1 is a very famous one. So basically these enzymes are like genetic scissors and they have the ability to cut the viral nucleic acid. So bacteria have evolved these really clever ways of protecting themselves against viral infection or infection by these bacteriophages. So now we have to discuss viral replication, how one virus will give rise to many others. Viral replication takes place in five steps and the easiest way to remember the five steps and the sequence in which they take place is to think of the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar and just remove the C off his last name. So let's go through those five stages in viral replication and just look at this diagram you can see that it's a bacteriophage infecting a bacterium. So step one, the virus attaches onto the outer surface or the membrane of the bacterium or the cell in which it's trying to infect. Step number two is entry. In the case of a bacteriophage, only the nucleic acid is injected or enters into the host cell. But in other viruses, sometimes the whole capsid, the whole virus goes into the host cell and the capsid is broken down, releasing the nucleic acid. Step number three is synthesis. In this stage, firstly, the host cell's DNA is inactivated and the viral nucleic acid sets about taking over or commandeering the host cell's machinery. It's using all the host cell's resources and raw materials to manufacture new nucleic acids and new protein coats. So the next stage is assembly. So all of the components, all of the protein coats, the capsids are now made, as are the nucleic acids, and basically they're now put together to form new viruses. The final stage in viral replication is release. This is where the newly assembled viruses are released from the host cell. Sometimes it does involve the death of the host cell, as in lysis, but in some other cases, the viruses do not kill the host cell. So those were the five stages in viral replication. We had attachment, entry, synthesis, assembly and release. So make sure you can discuss at least something about each of those stages. Give some details and make sure that you don't forget to mention that the host cell's DNA is inactivated. That's very important. A question which you're often asked about viruses is to argue whether they are living or non-living. And the only way we can really do that at our stage in our course is to use the characteristics of life. Oscar never eats red radishes. So their organisation, nutrition, excretion, response and reproduction. Well, first up, there's organisation. 
So the basic unit of life is the cell. And we've already said that viruses are non-cellular. They're literally just made up of that nucleic acid and the protein coat. Next up, it's nutrition. This is the way in which an organism obtains and uses its food. And we know that nutrition is usually a means for providing raw materials or, or to gain energy. But this is not the case for viruses. They usually just take over the host cell and use all of their materials and all of their energy. Next, it's excretion. This is the removal of metabolic waste. Well, viruses don't exhibit this characteristic. Next is response, and it could be argued that viruses are in fact exhibiting this characteristic in the way in which they attach on to their host cell's membrane and the way in which they're highly specific. And finally, we have reproduction. So we don't really say that viruses reproduce. We talk about viral replication because they use all of the host cell to manufacture the new parts for the new viruses. So viruses are classed as obligate parasites, O meaning zero. They can't do anything unless they infect a living host. So perhaps it's better to state that viruses are biological non-living entities. It's important that you can list some of the advantages and disadvantages of viruses for your exams. A major disadvantage to viruses is that they cause human disease and this can lead to death. So some examples would be measles, flu, Ebola, HIV, polio, winter vomiting bug even. All of these are caused by viruses. There are also some animal diseases caused by viral infections and this can have a very negative financial impact on the agricultural sector. And the same is true for plants. Plants can succumb to viral infections. For example, tomato and tobacco mosaic disease is a viral infection. Viruses do have some very important advantages. So they're used as vectors for transferring genes from one organism into another. And this is very important for genetic engineering and for the future of medicine. Another great advantage to viruses is the bacteriophage, that virus that can infect bacteria, and it's a possibly a way of controlling bacterial numbers. But it's also a possible solution to antibiotic resistance, which is a huge problem at the moment. So make sure you know the structure of the virus, make sure you can give an account of the steps involved in replication, AESAR, give an account of what bacteriophages are, list the benefits and disadvantages of viruses, and give an account or put forward an argument of living versus non-living. Some of the icons used in this presentation were from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member, but I want to credit the artists. So the very best of luck with all of your Leaving Cert revision. Make sure you're doing past papers and checking the answers with the marking scheme and always use your textbook. The very best of luck.